The foundation of a home is a particularly important area to inspect. The foundation is the main support for the home. If there are problems with the home's foundation, repairs not caught early may become extremely expensive. The supporting structure of a home is mainly configured in three different ways. These three arrangements have similar features like concrete footings that support the home's weight, yet also differ greatly and need to be looked at on an individual basis. Illustrated here is a pad style foundation. This style of support system is built using concrete reinforced with steel rebar rods laid deep into the ground. Over the footings rests the home's foundation, which is made of concrete rebar. Tied into the foundation is the home's concrete rebar slab, which supports some weight but is not designed to be a supporting feature in the home. When this type of home is built, its footings, foundation, and slab are poured at the same time, creating one solid piece. Note that the footings and foundation do extend into the center of the home, under the main weight-bearing walls. The next home was built over a crawl space. This style of support structure is consistent with the pad style, in that it is built with concrete rebar footings and a center block foundation reinforced with rebar. The difference is that the home is slightly elevated, and the main floor of the home is built over top of wooden joists instead of a concrete slab. The wooden joists extend from foundation point to foundation point. The last style of support structure we will look at is a home built with a basement, having both a concrete slab and an enlarged crawl space. Concrete rebar footings are poured, and center block reinforced with rebar is used to build the foundation, which becomes the basement walls. A cement slab is poured at the bottom of the foundation, which is now the basement floor. The first floor of the house rests on wooden joists that extend from foundation point to foundation point. Though your cursory inspection of the foundation is very limited, it is important to look as close as you can. Problems with the foundation will affect many other areas of the home, and the costs of repairs will grow rapidly. Taking the time to look for clues throughout the house should give you an indication of the home's overall soundness, saving you both time and money. During your inspection, if problems are discovered with the foundation, only a licensed structural engineer can give you a written certification to the foundation's soundness. Home inspectors cannot provide this service, so do not be fooled into having a home inspector certify structural problems. Begin your inspection in the main areas of your home. Bound doors and windows, along with cracked walls, are often indications of unseen ailments beneath your feet. Make a walking inspection of the perimeter of your home. The exposed foundation is usually the small inset band of concrete or masonry at the bottom of your house. Look along this band for any cracks, water damage or crumbling, paying attention to any clues that can be found. If your home is built with a concrete slab, inspect the exposed cement when and where available. Flooring is often in place before you have a chance to see the concrete slab, so look elsewhere in the home like the garage or while doing renovations. The slab itself should be level and free of any cracks. Small cracks called hairline cracks are normal and may form during the concrete securing process. Any cracks large enough you can stick a pencil into should be inspected professionally by a structural engineer. On this foundation wall, you can see where the anchor bolt was placed too close to the edge of the foundation wall, causing the concrete to later chip off and the bolt to rust. This type of problem should be fixed with an epoxy made for sealing cement. In homes built over a crawl space, it may be possible to look or even crawl under the home to inspect the condition of the foundation on a much more detailed scale. The first thing to inspect is whether or not the soil under your home is dry. This soil here is extremely dry, which is a good sign. Water promotes mold and dry rotten wood, and when in contact with cement, leaches out minerals deteriorating its structural integrity over time. While inspecting this crawl space, a plastic drain pipe for an ice maker was found, apparently draining a constant supply of water into the supporting soil. This whole area of the house was extremely muddy and raises serious questions as to why the pipe was placed there and what damage the water has caused. If water has been present in the crawl space, you may notice mineral or salt deposits on the foundation walls or concrete footings. The foundation's perimeter walls, if not properly sealed, will develop efflorescence, which are salt deposits. Here you can see large salt deposits that were found in this home's crawl space. Garden water from above seeped through this foundation wall, leaving its mineral trail. 
Remember, it is important to remedy any water problems as soon as possible. Modern home science now suggests that crawl spaces should be sealed from the outside, insulated, heated and cooled along with the rest of the house. This technique is designed to prevent mold and mushrooms from growing in the dark confines of the home's crawl space, requiring extremely expensive repairs. The other major concern with masonry, especially your foundation, is the presence of any cracks. These cracks indicate shifts between the footings underneath the foundation wall, either caused from ground settling or environmental changes. This is an ideal wall and the overall appearance is in good condition. If you discover any cracks or noticeable unevenness in the foundation, contact your structural engineer. Lastly, while under your home, inspect the wooden joists that support the first floor. Check for any dry rot or insect damage. Make sure that all the wood looks clean and in good condition. Check all the home's exposed hardware for anything that looks amiss. If your home is built with a basement, then you have easy access to inspect its structural underbelly. Any exposed concrete slab should be inspected to make sure it is free from those large cracks you can fit a pencil into. The basement walls are the foundation of the home and should be inspected closely to make sure there are no large cracks or efflorescence. Often walls are covered with drywall or paneling, so inspecting the foundation walls can take some ingenuity. Clues to look for are discoloration in the drywall and wet or moldy paneling. If this is seen then there is a problem and the wall is not draining or drying out properly. Modern home science also suggests that the basement should be insulated, cooled, and heated along with the rest of the house to prevent the growth of mold in this part of the home. Small cracks present anywhere in the basement should be filled with an epoxy that is made for sealing cement. Otherwise, if there ever is a hydrostatic or water pressure buildup in the soil against the foundation, water will seep into the house. Given that water can cause such problems to a basement, basements should include a sump pump. A sump pump is used to pump water out of the basement if there ever is a flood and to turn on automatically if the water table below the foundation rises, preventing the basement from being flooded. Check to make sure the sump pump is in good condition and in working order. Make sure to inspect all wooden joists for dry rot or insect damage, paying close attention to areas that are dark and humid. Lastly, if you live in an area that is susceptible to radon gas, make sure that you have a proper radon ventilation system installed. Driveways and pathways on the property do not necessarily affect the structural integrity of your home. However, they may provide an early warning to potential problems with the house, like settling of the supporting soil or an evasive tree root. On walkways, check for large cracks or any gross unevenness. With stone walkways, check the mortar joints for any damage. Trees with evasive root systems should be planted well away from the home's foundation and walkways. Overall, be aware of the condition of your home's walkways because these clues are a reflection of what is happening to the home's foundation.